Good. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us today for the Medicaid um, Home Community-Based Missouri Children's with Developmental Disabilities Waiver Webinar. This will be a 101 webinar. Um, today we have with us Leslie Bradley with the DD Federal Programs Unit and Anna Witherby with the DMH Medicaid Unit. Um, just a couple housekeeping items before I turn that over to them. If you have technical difficulties, um, please submit those questions or concerns through the chat box. Um, if you have technical questions about the content, um, put those in the Q&A box. We will be gathering those questions and respond to those at a time um, following the webinar. So um, please go ahead and ask questions to know that they won't be um, responded to live. So with, I am going to turn it over now to Leslie Bradley. Thanks, and thanks everyone for joining us for this third webinar of the Federal Programs Unit Waiver Webinar Series. This ABS webinar will provide a more detailed overview of the Missouri Children's with Developmental Disabilities Waiver, also known as the MoKids Waiver, which includes the purpose of the waiver, services it provides, and how the waivers are similar but yet different. So community-based waiver, otherwise known as HCBS. HCBS waivers provide community services to participants who would otherwise be placed in an institution, nursing home, or hospital to receive long-term care in their community. Basically, HCBS is about participants having the most integrated lifestyle as possible, just like you and me. Medicaid funding for the HCBS waivers in Missouri consists of matching approximately 36% state general revenue dollars with approximately 64% of federal dollars. This determines for each waiver the targeted population, the number of participants served, what services are covered, and how we'll spend on services in each waiver. A new Social Security Act was added which authorized state Medicaid agencies to apply for HCBS waivers. Participants no longer had to live in institutions in order to receive Medicaid. They get those dollars into the community. In 1995, Missouri implemented its MoKid HCBS waiver. <coughs> the targetation is children with developmental disabilities. The development has the capacity to serve 166 participants in this waiver. The last MoKid waiver application was approved by Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, effective July 1, 2018. The never renewal will be in 2023, and the whole process starts over a year in advance. During CMS approved the change of the waiver cycle years to July through June to align with the other division waivers. Previously, the MoKid waiver year was October 1st through September 30th. Now all the waivers are on the same waiver cycle. So a quick what you need to know about the MoKid waiver. Again, this waiver serves 366 participants and no annual cost cap. One of the requirements of the MoKid waiver is a child must be determined ineligible for any MoHealthNet program. For the purpose of this webinar, when we refer to MoHealthNet program, this means Medicaid coverage. If it has MoHealthNet spend down, then the family must explain how the spend down is a financial hardship and cannot be met with medical expenses. There's parental income and resources to be considered in determining a child's eligibility for MoHealthNet when the child lives at home with the parents. This document, called deeming parental income to the child, is way for children who participate in the MoKid waiver. However, it is important to keep in mind that there is a MoHealthNet income and resource limit for a MoKid child. For 2019, the monthly income limit for a child is 1,348, and the resource limit is $3,000. The child at home with family and under the age of 18 to be supported in this waiver. If it is out of the parent's home for more than 30 consecutive days, say in a hospital or treatment facility, then parents be excluded for eligibility and the child should be HealthNet eligible. It is important that parents report this information to Family Support Division. 
and could waiver is not for children who only need MoHealthNet services such as private duty nursing. Private duty nursing is not a service through the MoKid waiver. And this one you need to know continued. This is for children who have an ongoing waiver service need and use at least one waiver service monthly. If the child is determined eligible for the MoKid waiver, he or she will be placed on a wait list. On quarterly basis, available MoKid waiver slots are offered to children on the wait list who have the most critical unmet needs. The Benefits Coordination Committee, or BCC. The BC is comprised of division staff who meet when a packet is received, discuss the submitted BCC packet to determine if a child is accessing all services and funding mechanisms available and ensures that state plan services are utilized first. The BC process is only required for children under the age of three or with a current MoHealth net spin down. These children, the BC must approve the child for the MoKid wait list. The B list is located in the Support Coordinator Manual under Section 8, Kade and Waivers. The screening request. As a reminder, the Federal Programs Unit hosted a webinar describing the MoKid waiver screening request process and form on August 22, 2018. The MoKid waiver screening is an entirely different request from the BCC process. This is only used for children who have never had a MoHealth Net for Disabled eligibility determination or have not had a disabled eligibility determination within the last year. If family or child has a trust, do not use this form. The family must apply from Health Net for Disabled with Family Support Division in order for FSD's program and policy to review that trust. This is used by support coordinators and information specialists to determine a child's eligibility for a health net for disabled, a step in determining eligibility for the MoKid waiver and before being added to the MoKid wait list. The form is located on the DMH MoKid webpage. A link to this page will be provided on the resources slide at the end of the webinar. To turn the next three slides over to Anna, approach list with the DH Medicaid unit. Hello, I'm just going to go over a little bit about the MOCDD waiver screening request form and the revisions to it. Um, as Leslie said, we will have a link to the page at the end of this presentation, and I encourage you to always use the link instead of down the form and saving it as we do regularly make updates. We definitely make uh, a few updates to it, including adding a box which re reads family size. Now this is useful in determining whether or not the family would be eligible with a spend down. It also helps me double check that all of the information on the screening form is entered correctly. It's a checkbox that family has income greater than $860. This is the income limit from Health Net with no spend down. And it will change as needed. Income limit changes. We all added a checkbox which reads family has liquid resource greater than $3,000. $3,000 is the current resource limit for Mo Health Net for Disabled. And we'll update this on the form as limit increases as well. We've also did this uh, screening request flow chart. When determining when to use the MoKids Mo screening form, first you should make sure that the client does not currently have an active MoHealthNet case. You can check this online at dss.mo.gov, or you can email us uh, at the email address provided on the flow chart if you want to check whether or not the client has applied for MoHealthNet. There's not been an application made. The next step is to speak to the child's family to determine if they believe they are ineligible for MoHealthNet. We have available resources, checking, savings accounts, stocks, bonds, other investments, uh, property outside of their home, and um, one per adult. Over $3,000, the MoK 
kids' screening should be used. If they are over the income limit to receive Mo Health Net with no spam, they can still pursue the Mo Kids waiver, but they're fits for having Mo Health Net with a spend down. Having a spend down amount is the amount of household income, which is above the income maximum. The benefit of having a spend down, even if family can't meet it, is that it keeps their case open. So spend down can be met at any time during the month, either with bills or by payment, and the previous month within the year can also be met. And there are penalties for not meeting the spend down. The case just remains open. Children on the wait list for the MoKids waiver having an open case will also speed up the process of being them approved once they are given a waiver slot. Thank you. A little bit about state plan services. For those services items that are medically necessary, Mo HealthNet state plan services must first be utilized before waiver services are authorized. Net to approve funding, it must be a medical necessity. It should be determined if the need is actually for safety, convenience, or medical necessity. This is currently working in collaboration with Mo Health Net to create a document explaining what durable medical equipment items will be covered or not covered through Mo Health Net. This slide provides you with a list of all the services available in the MoKid waiver, which includes 15 services to meet the needs and flexibility of the participants supported in this waiver. Identify a child for the MoKid waiver. These items on this slide are all the things that you need to look for to determine if a child might be eligible for the MoKid waiver. You must have all three of these considerations. Family reports child's needs cannot be met through private health insurance resources such as bank accounts, trusts, natural supports, maybe family or friends, or community resources such as first steps or grants. The child is ineligible for any Mo Health Net program. If the child is eligible for Mo Health Net with a spin down, then the family must show how the spin down is a financial burden that cannot be met with incurred medical expenses. The child be waiver eligible, and the child must have an ongoing waiver service need and use at least one waiver service monthly. Family Once on the MoKid waitlist, slots are offered quarterly based on the highest priority of need score. Offices are notified of the children pulled from the wait list for a waiver slot. Supporters work or information specialist work with the family to complete the MoKid packet for submission to Family Support Division. If a child has active Mo Health Net spin down, a MoKid packet does not need to be completed. As Anna discussed previously, this is one reason families should be encouraged to maintain spin down eligibility, even if they are unable to meet the spin down. Family Support Division does not require any information for children with a spin down when processing for MoKid eligibility. However, on occasion, a child's completed, excuse me, a child's medical review team determination may be expired and a new determination must be completed and documentation must be provided. Exactly what a medical review team determination is will be explained on the next slide. So after it is a Approved by Family Support Division, Federal Programs Unit notifies the regional office and a MoKid waiver slot is assigned. One question I see frequently is whether families must have private health insurance in the MoKid waiver. The answer is that families should be encouraged to obtain and maintain their private health insurance, but they are not required to do so for participation in the MoKid waiver. of the MoKid waiver on their 18th birthday. This is the only waiver that will have a waiver slot start date and termination date entered in Seymour when the child's waiver slot is assigned. The MoKid waiver slot will terminate the day before the child's 18th birthday. 
please refer to Dishing Guideline Number 32, Mobile Health Net Applications for Youth Approaching 18th Birthday, for information and guidance about this process. Prior to the MoCAD waiver turning 18 and transitioning to adult Mo Health Net for the age blind and disabled, the Family Support Division application process has been simplified. If FDE needs additional documentation for resource, household information, or in the medical review team determination, then FSD will contact the family. Support to assist and support families with this transition. FSD may request assistance when obtaining medical information for the medical review team review. FSD is a team of physicians who make a determination of whether a child is permanently and totally disabled based on medical records and documentation supplied. Things to keep in mind about all DD waivers. Participants may qualify for both the Department of Health and Senior Services, DSS, and the Department of Mental Health waivers. However, a participant can only receive services in one waiver at a time. Therefore, the support coordinator should work with DHS to ensure that the participant is not in two waivers at the same time. It cannot consumer direct state plan and self-directed deed waiver services at the same time. Home may not be furnished to adapt living arrangements that are owned or leased by providers of waiver services. These would be considered provider owned and controlled. And participant must have an ongoing monthly waiver service need that is documented in their individualized support plan. If need for services is less than monthly, participant requires regular monthly monitoring, which must be documented in the ISP. MoHealth reviews are mandatory for all waivers. C requires the Medicaid agency, which is MoHealthNet to provide oversight to the Division of DD, which is the operating agency of the DD waivers. We will request a statistically valid sample of waiver records to review for compliance and verify if the division is meeting the required expectations. Most include the level of determinations, ISPs, the Medicaid waiver provider services choice statements, assessment used to determine the LOCs, authorizations, and monthly and or quarterly reviews for the fiscal year requested. It requires the division to report quarterly and annually to MoHealthNet. These five assurances on this slide address important dimensions of waiver quality, including that service plans are designed to meet the needs of participants and that there are effective systems in place to monitor participant health and welfare. For the waiting provider qualifications, either LNC or an accreditation organization ensures compliance. Here are important and helpful resource links. The first is the MOCA EMH webpage, the MOCA waiver application, and the waiver overview and process document, which was currently which was recently updated January 2nd, 2019, and is located in the Online Support Coordination Manual, Section H. Next, a few additional resources, including the current approved DD Ware Provider Manual, the Programs Unit page, and the HBS Transition Plan. So I really encourage you to keep this slide handy as a resource for future use and reference. Thank you all for your time, and we hope this webinar has been very helpful.